Independence is strength. Collective independence is power. You know, hip hop is a powerful thing. But that power can be used for or against. I love hip hop. I said I love hip hop. So for the love of hip hop, let me share something with you. Listen. I got a secret, everybody come and listen. They took the money out of schools and they got rich building prisons. The people in the With rap verses and rhyme. Made it cooler go to jail, then gave niggas time. Well brainwash the people with a marketing plan. This brother all around me like he's stalking me, man. With his slogans and his phrases. What are some of these lyrics that are out there present day after the history of hip hop? Well documented. Why are we still calling women out their names? Why are we still um, relegating women to just being the half-naked chick in the video? Why are we objectifying the women? Why are we beating up the wound with terms in our lyrics like smash it and crush it and hitting it and all this kind of stuff? You know why? I want to hear from the men and then the two sisters on the panel can just kind of bring up the real. All right? When he said that, you know, it's in the environment and rap music is perpetuated. Right. Who perpetuates rap music? Right. That's, that's the question because it's always been here. You can go back 5,000 years ago. Men have object objectified, sexually objectified women, and women have sexually objectified themselves. There, there, there have been women run problems throughout history. There have been men run problems throughout history. It's been there, right? Right. But now all of a sudden, all we're getting is a perpetuation of this particular brand of rap lyric. Why? Because in the beginning was the word. <laughs> the word was with God, and the word was God. So words and vibrations shape your entire reality, and because Master knows that no nation can rise higher than its woman, as long as I keep the women at a very low base level, who's the first, first and foremost primary teacher is the woman. So if I keep her blind, deaf, and dumb, I know the puppies is coming out blind, deaf, and dumb. Look at I'm that bad bitch, I'm this bitch. That was my next one. He is correct, okay, women being objectified is not exclusive to hip hop and it's certainly not exclusive to the black community. What is exclusive, however, is the teaching of objectifying black women. Black men have been taught on a daily basis to objectify their women. Let's be clear, when the black man tried to love us, you had to hide from the social worker. Right. When the black man tried to love us, right, we had to be split up by law. Right. On paper. On paper. We were beaten and raped in front of you. In addition to that, women have learned, black women have learned how to objectify themselves. Um, if you go back to what the 90s, um, when they had the sister in the video and Nelly put a credit card through her butt cheeks. No one walked up to that sister with a gun and said, yo, you better bend over and put this, this credit card in your butt cheek. <laughs> listen, listen, this is called self-hatred. What we are talking about is a mechanism, it's a system, and we're trying to focus on one element of the system, and we have to focus in on the entire system. It's self-hate. The black man hates himself, and turn he hates his woman, and turn he hates his family. The black woman hates herself, she hates her man, and turn she hates her family. In turn, we hate each other, we hate our community. So when we see images of thugs with guns, we're not thinking that he's gonna shoot the gun at someone other than the person that looks just like him. Right. Because it's self-hatred. Right. So when we're talking about objectifying black women, we have to talk about objectifying the black race. Mm -hmm. but, but how about, how about that sister? In doing so, women have decided in that given situation that I'm having fun here and you're not really getting into the effects of the different things that are being said. And in the words of Neil Fuller, because something I want to say, because we've been using this term 
white supremacy a lot. And in the words of Dr. Nathan Fuller, he said, if you don't understand white supremacy, everything else is confused you. So we talk about all these things we're talking about, whether or not we're gonna call bitches and abuse this, that, and the other, we are functioning within a reaction to something much greater than what's happening in rap music. And if you don't understand the structure out of which all these things come, then you're gonna be confused. So I, I invite everyone, even the aspect of dealing with the concept of black women being called bitches. If you understand, uh, look into the work of uh, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, the ISIS kids. She breaks that whole thing down from the structure which we're living in to the point of why, why is this, this uh, thing about the objectification of black women in particular in this particular kind of way that is perpetuated in the media all the way through. There's a reason for that. It's part of the strategy of the whole thing. Dr. Neely Fuller, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, understand the structure of white supremacy. Independence is strength. Collective independence is power.